Hello! Who remembers this man? And I can spin it incredibly fast. Yes, Antonio Subrats. He responded to me in a live stream of his own and he's challenged me to answer a series of questions. That's what I'm going to do today. But before that, Chatbox Travels. Maybe tomorrow I want to settle down So, in this chat box travels, and hopefully all the chat box travels in the future, I will be including comments from you guys um, and excellent points you've made in our own comment section. But first of all, I want to stop off and have a look at what this man said. Hello, my name is Trev Dawson. Do you really believe the total bullshit that flows from your gob, or are you working off a community service charge? If it's yes to the first question, then I feel sorry for you, but I keep my religious beliefs to myself instead of making yourself look like a complete brainless idiot. Blah, blah, blah. Don't read the rest of this. It's shit. Now, normally, I just ignore comments like that. I'm used to clicking on the name and seeing a channel that's got no videos. But something called out to me when I saw this comment and thought, I'm going to have a look. <laughs> I'm so glad I did. I can't live if living is without you. I haven't gone all soppy and romantic. I hope not, pal. For a minute there, I thought you were going to ask me out on a date. No. Right, good. Because I hope you know that'll uh, that'll never happen. Such a f ridiculous fantasy. Not a fantasy of mine, mate. Um, it, I am in pain. All right, calm down, man. You'll get over it. Anyway, I think you're teasing me. I think there's another message you want to send me. You've guessed it. Yeah. Nice. So you're a big player in the Flat Earth movement, aren't you? So what particular skill set and knowledge can you bring to the table? I could maybe play the one-handed penny whistle, but that's about it. Well, uh, that's more than most of them can do. Now, I'm sure you're underselling yourself. I'm sure you've at least got a really good grip on maths, maybe. Um, so what's 20 plus 20? Uh, 40. Oh, well done. I'll see you around, Trev. <sighs> right, the next stop on our chat box travels takes me to this message by Conspiracy Cat subscriber Mark Pointer. Now, you can see that's quite a long message, so I'll summarise it, and it's brilliant. As you know, we've done a few videos lately where we look at the difference between gravity and density and why density can't be a reason that things fall. Mark's suggestion was to take a football and then think about how the air pressure and the density of it increases as it moves closer to the ground. So underneath the football, the air is more dense than above the football. So if I let go of the football and the ball was to move purely because of differences in density, why doesn't that ball move upwards? Because the density difference in the upwards direction is bigger than the density difference in the downwards direction. But it doesn't. Mark, that is a fantastic point. I wouldn't hold your breath for the answer though. Maybe tomorrow I want to settle down Until tomorrow I'll just keep moving on Right, so we're about two minutes away from checking out uh, Antonio Subarat and responding to him. But before then, a Conspiracy Cat subscriber has asked me to look up somebody called Delano TV. Now, I've never heard of him. Let's see what he's all about. The sun and the moon in the sky at the same time. Right there is proof that it's a flat fucking earth. It's, it's fucking proof. Well, I've no idea what he's on about, but he sure looks cool, doesn't he? I'm going to tell you what happened to me about four fucking days ago. And my homeboy taking pictures. Cha -cha, cha -cha. He's so cool. I started looking at the moon. It was in the sky at the same time as the sun it was when I was checking my email. Like, I see it too. So our friend here released a video. <laughs> God, I can't do it. Our friend here released a video claiming that he had uh, ultimate proof that the earth was flat. And it's because he saw the sun and the moon in the sky at the same time. I just haven't got time to debunk that kind of idiocracy right now. Um, because now we're going to have a more serious scientific chat with... And Tobio Subras. This video is going to be a, uh, a response to Conspiracy Cats. All oh, Conspiracy Cats, I've heard of him. He's a um, baldy headed Jimmy Somerville lookalike. Go on. Uh, not only am I making a response, I've sent him a message um, to see whether he'll come on a hangout. I can confirm this is true. Negotiations are underway.
he's busy getting ready because the school year has just started and I believe he's a teacher. I think he's a teacher. I've heard he's a teacher. I don't believe it. No, no reason to believe it. And now is a great time to plug my other channel, GCSE and A-Level Science. Link in the description. If you've got kids who are studying for any exams or kids at school that want help with science, subscribe to that and then message me on my email here and I'll make a video for you. Here we go. This is Conspiracy Cats. First off, I'm going to say, um, <clears throat> cool guitars and ukuleles. Uh, really nice. That's what they are. Uh, uh. Okay, so let's get to it. On his live stream, Antonio played my video and then stopped it when he felt he wanted to add or critique something. Let's start here. But for an object that is spinning, not to be thrown off that roundabout or not to be thrown away, there needs to be a force in the opposite direction. We call That's a mistake. We call that the centripetal force. That's a mistake. That's a very simple, fundamental mistake. It's about as fundamental as uh, rest rhetoric, not understanding triangles. It's not the case that anything going spinning uh, is subject to centrifugal force. Centrifugal and centripetal force are part and parcel of something spinning. Without the centrifugal and centripetal force, there is no spin. Okay, so this is the first point he disagrees with me on. We'll just hear him say one more thing on it, and then I'll get the whiteboard out. He's separating centrifugal from centripetal with spin. Okay, Antonio, before I talk to you about why I'm separating centrifugal and centripetal force, watch the clip of this hammer thrower. Right, Antonio, you're saying that I shouldn't separate centripetal and centrifugal, and I should just accept that both exist when something spins. My point to you is, we can always point to the source of the centrifugal force and the source of the centripetal force. It's very important. In the case of the hammer thrower you've just seen, that hammer thrower is throwing the hammer in a circle. Now, he is providing the centrifugal force. He is the one driving the movement of that hammer. And when he lets go of the hammer, it obviously shoots off in a straight line. But for the rest of the time, what is stopping it shooting off in a straight line? Well, it's the tension in the rope on the hammer that's pulling it towards a circle. The tension is the centripetal force, and the, the, the movement, the force provided by the hammer thrower is providing the centrifugal force. Now, the centrifugal force, or if we are spinning, the centrifugal and centripetal, because it'll be the same size, is given by the formula mv squared over r. So if that hammer thrower started to spin faster and faster and faster and faster and faster, the centrifugal force would eventually get so big that the rope couldn't handle that tension and the rope would snap. And then we would stop having uh, a spin because the centripetal force, it just, it's just not strong enough to balance out the centrifugal force. This is really, really important. Whenever anything spins, we can always identify the source of centrifugal or the centrifugal force and the centripetal force. That's totally unfair, not unfair, that's uh, invalid. Centripetal goes with centrifugal when there is spin. Yes, but I'll say it again, we can always identify the source of both. If I was stood on a roundabout and the roundabout was spinning and providing that centrifugal force on me, trying to throw me off, I know that the centripetal force stopping me being thrown off is provided by the friction between my feet and the roundabout, um, and also how hard I can hold on to the bars. We can always identify the source of both forces. But as it spins it faster and faster, that centrifugal force, which is... M sorry, sorry, centrifugal. So listen to what he says. That centrifugal force gets stronger, so... V squared over R, V being velocity, gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So a bigger centripetal force is needed to keep... The so a, a bigger centripetal force is needed. Because the centrifugal force has increased due to the spin, the centripetal force increases. It's like, wait a second. Uh, why would the centripetal force be increasing? The spin is increasing. That's, be, that's being shown by the water going up or by the pizza dough stretching. But why would the centripetal force increase? What would cause 
uh, gravity to increase its force. It okay, Antonio, this is where I'm going to make an assumption about what I think it is you're saying. If I am wrong, pi uh, put it in the comments. I will pin it to the top and I will address it and apologize in the next video. Okay. I feel that you're saying that because the Earth has a faster linear speed at the equator, the centrifugal force is bigger at the equator. So therefore, uh, I'm saying that gravity must somehow be stronger at the equator and just become stronger. That's not what I'm saying. Let's go back to the hammer thrower. As the hammer thrower starts to, to spin, he provides a centrifugal force and the rope provides a centripetal force. But that rope has a, a maximum centripetal force that it can handle. Let's say the tension in the rope, the maximum tension is 50,000 newtons. I, I don't know, you know what realistic numbers are for, for a rope. As that hammer thrower starts to spin and go faster and faster and faster, the tension in the rope is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. But it's only at the point where the rope can't handle that tension anymore will it snap and the hammer will fly off. And it's the same with the Earth. The centripetal force is provided by gravity pulling it in. Now, gravity has, we know, 9.8 newtons per kilogram of force um, on each kilogram of water. So the water isn't going to fly off until the centrifugal force exceeds 9.8 newtons per kilogram of water. And it never does. We, we find even at the fastest, we get 0.03 newtons per kilogram. So the difference is massive. I am not saying gravity gets stronger at the equator. It just, I'm not saying it just appears to get stronger. If I've misquoted you or misunderstood you, let me know and, and I will pin it. Unbelievable, Jeff! Now, at... Uh, now, at this point, I have to give you a disclaimer. If you haven't seen my video number 16, where I first address Antonio and his experiment, then you're going to need to watch it now. Otherwise, you're going to get very, very lost about what we're talking about. If you have already seen it, crack on. To where it is. But the friction between the water and the bowl, it's not strong enough to match that centrifugal force. So, what the water does when it moves higher, when it goes up the steeper side of the bowl, and I'm not going to get the whiteboard out and draw complex vector diagrams. But essentially, the weight of the water that was acting downwards, as it starts to go up that side of the bowl, a bigger and bigger and bigger proportion of that weight acts towards the centre of the bowl. A bigger and bigger proportion of that weight acts towards the centre of the bowl. So he's, he's confirming what he was saying about the centripetal force having to increase. So the force going out is increasing. Therefore, the force pushing in must also be increasing. That's what he's saying. Like literally, that, that is what he just said. And actually adds to that centripetal force until it matches the centrifugal force. It's That's called an ad hoc explanation. No, it really is not an ad hoc explanation. Check out this caravan going uphill. He's burning a bit rich, I'd say. <laughs> now check it out going downhill. Oi, oi. <laughs> right, here we go. So when I've got a car or a caravan on uh, a flat surface, all of its weight acts just downwards, and I'm sure we can all accept that. But when I've got one on a hill, we know that the car or caravan or whatever is going to roll down the hill. It's going to roll in this direction. So there must be some force, something moving it in this direction. And what's actually happening is the weight of the car is being split into, well, let's have a look. The centre of the earth is down here. So the weight of the car wants to act in this direction. But what's actually happening is because we're on a, a steep hill, some of the weight of the car is acting onto the road. And we can all accept that the, the, the car pushes down on the road. But the car is also rolling backwards this way. So we end up with a component of the car's weight pushing into the road and a component of the car's weight rolling down the hill. Now, the steeper the gradient of the hill, so let's say this is 15 degrees, this angle here will also be 15 degrees. The steeper the hill gets, the bigger this angle gets and the bigger the component acting, if you like, downwards for the caravan. Now, we can all relate to that because we all see caravans roll down a hill, but how does this relate to your water experiment? I'll clean the board. I'll be back in one second. One. 
As if by the magic of TV, here we are. So here's our bowl, very poorly drawn. Here's our water inside. As you spin that bowl faster, mv squared over r, the centrifugal force, gets bigger. And the water wants to be thrown away. But it can't be thrown away because your, your dish is made of, of glass, isn't it? It's a solid. So it starts to move up the sides of the container. But as it moves up the side of the container, it's like the caravan going up a steeper and steeper and steeper hill. A bigger proportion of the weight of the water starts to act in the same direction as that centripetal force. So at a certain speed, the water will reach a certain height where the centripetal force now matches the centrifugal force and that height will remain constant. If you then start spinning it faster from that point, the centrifugal force gets bigger, the water is then going to rise, but only up until the point where the centripetal force, because even more weight now uh, from the water is acting in that centripetal direction, and they'll balance each other out. So it's not a, an ad hoc explanation by any stretch of the imagination. It's um, proven beyond any doubt whatsoever. You know, if the centripetal force wasn't going to increase, something wouldn't stay spinning. You know. Anyway, you asked other questions, and I really do want to answer them, but this video has gone on for quite a long time, and I don't make videos that are very long. So if you do respond either by email or post a comment with the specific questions you're answering, then I will answer them. And if it's a comment, I'll pin it to my video, and then everybody can see I'm either running away from the comments or, or I'm not. Um, Antonio, the only, only other thing I'll say is you've been an absolute gentleman in our... Um, uh, communications on email so you know i hope we can continue the dialogue goodbye